Hey guys, what's up? You can see me in the reflection. It's like a, it's a MySpace selfie. Uh, but I want to show you this tank. So I added light and shrimp. So both tanks got shrimp actually, but we added some orange shrimp in here. And there's a little bit of Siswasser tank down below, which we can't get in stock anymore. Awesome. But what I want to show off is there's a couple things going on in this aquarium. So I like, I, I messed with it and I walked away for like a week because there was reef works and getting ready for Aquashella and doing all that kind of stuff. But I did put a new light on it. So we upgraded the lighting from a standard Stingray to the Fluval 3.0. I also did another change. I turned the water changes down by a ton. So instead of doing it four times a day, now I think it's doing it like once a week. So I've got to obviously dial some things in and you can see how crazy messy this studio is. I guess I'll chime in on that right now because that just looks weird. So over here, this is aftermath of uh, ReefWorks. I took a bunch of buckets home for free. That's the light I just set up. Well, not just set up, that's the light I set up. And then we're getting rid of a couch uh, and that's so I can put breeding tanks here. So I'm gonna, I think it's something like the quarantine system, which will probably take two months to have built but like three racks or three rows of tanks that I can do some breeding in. And so part of that, you know, I had to, Jimmy's out of town, it's his birthday. And so I had to move some of the, the uh, picture taking equipment and all that kind of stuff. And then this couch is leaving and still have filter project to do, but you know, moving towards it. So just wanted to explain like my life is just that. So you've got lighting stuff, you've got reports from meetings, You've got this right here, which I'll show you this guys real quick and then I'll chime back in on those tanks. You guys said you wanna see more stuff that I'm testing. So this right here is a Wi-Fi controlled um, auto feeder, right? So you plug it in with, with USB. It's overall it's super chintzy compared to this Eheim, right? So this is like, they basically clone this thing. And you can interchange some parts like, this and this, you can swap. Some of the differences that we found, which I'm not a huge fan of this thing, so I already know, kind of sucks, but there's no holes in it. And there are holes in this one. You can see the grid, like if you can get the right, I think on the other side, they copied it, but then like didn't go through with it. Yeah, you can see how you can kind of see that grid work there. So it's like they copied it, but didn't do it. So what that is, is on the Eheim feeder, uh, there's a little fan when you hit the button here The fan pulls air through here so that way when you're dumping food and uh, Moist air comes in it pulls that through so it doesn't mold the food right kind of a cool feature So it's got that going for it I really like the Wi-Fi capability and they actually did improve one thing on this and that is the feeder here They're like the feeding hole. So you've got these two little holes there Which would be great instead of having to do tape like I've had to do in previous videos you can use that where this one is just a hole, right? So I think that actually is an improvement and Eheim, if you're listening, fix it, replace it with this thing or make me be able to buy this thing instead of having to buy this whole knockoff unit. But the craftsmanship is what I was looking at. And I feel like even if I had this product made for aquarium co-op, I have to do some serious modifications. And that would be, if we look inside here, oh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that really well. I wonder if I can get the right light Oh, I don't think we're gonna be able to. If I stand up, maybe? Oh, you just gotta have to trust me that it looks like a train wreck inside of there. It's like really clunky plastic. And then on this one, it's super well refined. So like just the internals already are, you know, not optimal. So it's stuff like that where like, I wish we could take this and make it, like this is 10 times heavier than this, by the way. And then this whole, this whole apparatus is rinky dink. So kind of one of the cool things is you could take this and you could add it to this. Like, you know, I can make the best of both worlds. I only bought one to test it. So, but so now I've got this adjustable new kind of thing and it does fit straight on. So, you know, could do that. Could make a best of both worlds. Eheim, this is a direct part replacement. Consider it, you know, this is one of those things of like, I'm a hobbyist. And that's clearly just better. And I don't think it would cost that much more at the factory to make this little piece of plastic right here than the one you're making. So that's kind of some of the testing I've been doing. Uh, some other things we're testing 
and we're not getting the results we want yet, but um, looking at some test strips. So we're having, looking into having our own test strips made because Tetra uh, doesn't want to allow me to sell them online because there's a devil. Um, so yeah, these are two different ones. This is how I want it set up versus how, like this is a generic one, right? So they've got pH, nitrate, total alkalinity, total hardness, and nitrite, right? This one has got pH, total alkalinity, nitrate, nitrite, and total hardness. I personally think this is the one that I built. We, we had both of them, but this is the one I like. I want, I think, I think for the average person, pH is the most important for them right at the beginning, and nitrate, and then alkalinity, the amount of buffer, and the amount of hardness, and then nitrite. And I can put them in any order I want. Uh, the first thing that we've seen that we wanna do, so we're already back to the drawing board on this, is, um, and I know like Randy's gonna kill me because we're in R&D at the moment. But we think the pads are too close together. We wanna to space them out. Um, so that's one of the first things we wanna do. And we were also testing some ammonia and I've gotta order a bunch of kits. So one of the things I gotta do is I gotta order a bunch of kits with like specific pH solutions, hardness solutions, all that kind of stuff. So I can test and make sure that this number reads accurately because if it doesn't there's no point in importing like four billion of these things and obviously we'd have to change the packaging because um you know it's not not too good but that's what we're working on and if we go right over here back to what i was talking about i want to show you this kind of oil slick protein film on top of the water so that's what's going on here and all these bubbles i want to talk about this so first we have a zis filter over here right and because I was like, oh, I want to see how quiet I could make this thing, blah, blah, blah. I ended up raising it to the top and it was super quiet. Problem is, it's now higher than the water line because I haven't cut back the autofill line. That's that black line on the right is. That's the water change system. So it back siphoned in a little bit, lowered the water level down. All right. So there's basically like no filtration going on in here. And luckily for me, it's just shrimp, shrimp and snails, orange shrimp. So. Uh, but what I want to show off is that the bubbles that are rising up, and it's going to be hard to show. I got to like post up on something. I think where that shrimp is, if I can zoom in for you guys. See the bubbles that are going up? That is a plant that's happy. It's getting enough light. It's got enough fertilizer. It's producing oxygen. And all those bubbles, because of the protein film, are being caught. Now... You only get bubbles rising to the top of an aquarium like that from a plant when there's so much oxygen in the water that no more can go in there without just being a bubble that goes up. So right now, you know, part of you might have thought like, oh geez, any oxygen going on, you've cut off the water surface and all this. The reality is there's maximum amounts of oxygen in there. We have a really low bio load. And uh, so really that, that is doing nothing at the moment. Now I'm gonna fix that when I put the camera down and all that, so my goal today is get that fixed and uh, start playing with some of this stuff. But I just wanted to point that kind of stuff out because I think a lot of people, they assume to get plants to purl, so that's what that's called when the oxygen is raising up from a plant. To get plants to purl, you have to inject CO2. We're not injecting CO2 yet. We have CO2, I haven't hooked it up yet or anything. All I've done is use Easy Green, that's the old bottle, uh, and some good lighting. So with those two in mind, you can pull off some really cool things. Now, I'm obviously gonna change the setup, but the closer things get to light, the more oxygen. You see like right here on that, that uh, this is Dwarf Sagittaria. So another good tip, I'm just gonna hit you guys with tips on Sundays, I think. First, clean up before you film, tip number one. Tip number two, uh, if you ever get a plant that doesn't have good roots, float it at the top because it'll be right next to the light and it'll get it'll grow fast so kind of say so you see this plant here it's growing lots of roots this little java fern that fell off of whatever it was on let me see if i can get that camera work a little better there it's got a bunch of bubbles on it as well and that that's from just being super close to the light and photosynthesizing super hard so that's what's going on in that tank uh, I'm also playing with the 75 down low here. And this, we put a new light on this one too, right? We were testing that light out last time. And I said, you know what? I'm just going straight for the Fluval 3.0 because that's the light I like. 
And so we can kind of see the difference we have. If I hit the button here, I could turn this thing off probably. So now it's totally off. Let's turn the Stingray on. So obviously the light's a little bit towards the back. Let's go ahead and move that forward a little bit. This is what this aquarium looked like last week. You know, now it doesn't look horrible. Plants still look okay. But then when we kick over the light, that's where we want to see that difference here. And we're going to turn it right. There we go. Oh, I'm going to put it to blue. Or green, yeah. So green is Bluetooth. So I just think that's a much, much brighter aquarium. And overall, looking good. Oh, so another thing I did, I removed all the filtration from these. I guess I didn't mention that. I think I mentioned it last week or whenever you see this, that I was gonna remove all the hang on backs. And so I've done that with both of them. Both hang on backs have been removed on both of these. So that's part of the transition. I added cherry shrimp because I wanted to breed more cherry shrimp. These are just normal cherry shrimp that we sell for like six bucks at our store. I think we tend to get pretty decent cherry shrimp in my opinion. And so the goal here, the plan, and I don't know if it all happened today, but I wanna to set up more lights uh, want to breed these guys a ton, need to refill the auto feeder, need to catch this guy out. This guy's an oddball. If you let that guy go along in there and breed for a long time, he's going to mess up uh, the, the babies and the strain in here. So I need to catch that guy out. He's probably going to live with the turtles and just add to the guppy colony over there. Uh, we moved the angels. So yes, the angels that were up there, I moved down here. We're going to put a new light on them and that kind of stuff. But the blue angels down here, I'm going to remove some of this moss and I'm going to put a breeding slate in there. I'm going to take the heater out. So basically equipment out, probably sponge filter or uh, zis filter in and move on with that one. Over here, we still have the guppies that I brought back from the guppy world championships in, in uh, Vienna. And all of those, we're going to move up to that 75 up here. So that way we've got just a lot of action in these two tanks. And then from there, I don't know what I'm doing yet besides setting up more breeding tanks and that kind of stuff. So just wanted to bring you guys in on it. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope you're excited. I'm basically, I'm going to try to chime in fairly often with this kind of stuff and just kind of be more one camera, me, zero editing, jerky shots, and hanging out in my fish room, you know, looking at snails, looking at things. Like I, I'm interested to see how good this tank's going to look once we swap the light and, uh, yeah, so next time maybe I won't show you products I'm testing because I was going to turn these lights off so filming worked better, but it's kind of been a train wreck. But I'm gonna get, I want to get this dressed up and uh, looking better. So do me a favor and check out the videos that are on the screen right now. This will be linking to the playlist of all my fish room videos so you can get caught up on all the, all the fish rooms we've built and how we got to the studio and how we're now going back to the fish room. Uh, or check out the latest video. And I appreciate you guys watching. Every minute you guys watch actually helps fund uh, make more content. So we'll see you next time.